So, Rebecca called last night. OMG. Yeah, well, it turns out she was with that bartender after all. OMG. Yeah, and um, apparently a waitress joined them, so there's that. OMG. Okay, what, what are you doing? What? The OMG thing, what is that? It stands for Oh My God. Yeah, I know what it stands for. Why are you saying it like that? It's the way the kids are saying it these days. You're 42. Hashtag ouch. Well, anyway, she wants to try to work things out, but I don't know. I'm still mad, but maybe we should try to make it work. OMG. Hey, dude, really with that. What? It's in the script. What script? What? Wait, so this is just an intro to a stupid YouTube video? It's about the Oh My God particle. I've been crying in my room about Rebecca for a week. Have you? Hey, hang on, can I step in just a second? Hey, you guys are doing great. Love what you're doing, all right? But let's try to bring the energy level up just a little bit, okay? You're at about a six. Let me get you to about an eight, okay? Okay, we'll just take it from here. You good with that, bud? Okay, I love what you're doing. Let's just take it from there. Okay, so you just found out that your entire existence is a lie for a nonsensical YouTube intro and action. Oh my God, exactly. Lance LaFerb asks, can you do a video on the Oh My God Particle? That would be a neat video. So yeah, first things first, this is not a video about the God Particle, AKA the Higgs boson. This is the Oh My God Particle. Different thing for reasons that I will explain right now. From 1983 to 1991 on the Dugway Proving Ground in Utah, an experiment was underway by the University of Utah called the Fly's Eye Cosmic Ray Detector. Sounds super high tech, right? Well, here's the Fly's Eye. And if it looks like a bunch of cans with mirrors in them, that's basically what they were. They were literally made out of a section of culvert. The purpose of this crude device was to test out a new way of measuring cosmic rays in the upper atmosphere that's called atmospheric fluorescence. It was basically designed to pick up the faint glow of nitrogen molecules as the cosmic ray burst through the upper atmosphere. And by analyzing this glow, they could determine the direction and intensity of the cosmic ray. And this is how they found the Oh My God particle. But before I go into that, let me back up a little bit to talk about cosmic rays so you can understand the Oh My Godness of this thing. So there are two types of radiation that hit Earth, solar wind and cosmic rays. Solar radiation is made up mostly of charged particles and photons, most of which get captured in the magnetic field of the Earth, which is what causes the auroras at the poles. That's not what we're talking about today. Cosmic rays are made up mostly of the nuclei of atoms, 90% of which are just single protons, which is the nucleus of a hydrogen atom. And they have more energy in them because they have mass. So thanks to the whole E equals MC squared thing, the faster they travel, the more energy they contain. I talked a little bit in the video about the dangers going to Mars, about cosmic rays and the damage that they can inflict on people once they leave our protective atmosphere and magnetosphere. In fact, the Apollo astronauts and even some astronauts on the ISS experienced flashing lights, which were actually cosmic rays colliding with the vitreous humor inside their eyeballs. Well, most cosmic rays speed through our universe at about 0.3 giga electron volts or three times 10 to the eighth electron volts. And if you want to know why I didn't just say 300 million, wait. Because in 1962, at the Volcano Ranch experiment in New Mexico, John D. Lindley and Livio Scarzi recorded the first high-energy cosmic ray, which clocked in at 1 times 10 to the 20 electron volts, carrying 16 joules of energy. This was the first high-energy cosmic ray ever discovered, which was shocking not just because of the amount of energy it was carrying, but because it shouldn't have been possible thanks to something called the GZK cutoff. GZK stands for the scientists Kenneth Griesen, Georgi Zatzman, and Vadim Kuzmin, who set a speed limit for cosmic rays at 5 times 10 to the 19th electron volts, or 8 joules of energy. It was believed that particles shouldn't be able to travel faster than this because of interactions with photons in the cosmic microwave background radiation. This new class of cosmic rays has been called trans-GZK cosmic rays. They're super rare, and they're thought to be from relatively close by, because the further along in space it would travel, the more it would interact with the CMB. But close by is a relative term, because these cosmic rays are thought to be intergalactic in origin. And it was in the search for these kinds of high energy cosmic rays that the Fly's Eye Telescope was created. And on October 15, 1991, they found the mother of all high energy cosmic rays. All right, let me just rattle off a few factoids about this thing. It was traveling at 99.999999999999999999951% the speed of light. If this particle was traveling alongside a photon that was traveling at the speed of light, it would take 250,000 years before that photon got one centimeter in front of it. It carried three times 10 to the 20 electron volts. 
That's this many electron volts. 300 quintillion. These numbers don't even make sense anymore. It hit the atmosphere with 50 joules of energy, or about the same as a baseball traveling at 65 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour. And all that energy was in a proton that, if an atom were a cathedral, would be the size of a speck of dust floating around inside of it. This is 40 million times faster than anything we've accelerated in the Large Hadron Collider. And just to pile on, in the book What If, he answers the question what would happen if a 100 foot wide diamond hit the Earth at several different speeds, and just for grins he went all the way up to the speed of the oh my god particle. Collision would basically turn the planet into an expanding cloud of subatomic plasma. Literally even atoms wouldn't survive. So luckily we're just talking about a proton here. But how do you make these things? How is this possible? They have more energy than one would expect to be expelled from a standard supernova, but there is something called shock acceleration that may be the culprit. The theory says that as a star goes supernova, it creates a shock wave that the particles bounce back and forth in between, gaining speed with each bounce. The stronger an object's magnetic field, the more energy is imparted into the particle until it finally escapes at ultra-fast speeds. Although it might not just be supernovas, the kind of energy in neutron stars and galactic cores might have the energy to do this as well. Some even believe they could be expelled as dark matter gets ripped apart at the edge of supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies. And another theory suggests it might be something akin to the gravity assist technique that we use when we slingshot objects through the solar system, except it's on a galactic scale. It gets launched out of one galaxy, it gets slingshotted through the black holes or past the black holes of several galaxies until it rockets up to the speeds that we see them. Since the discovery of the OMG particle, there have been a slew of new cosmic ray observatories like the Pierre Auger Observatory and the Telescope Array Project, which is the successor to the fly's eye. There have also been efforts to focus on high-energy neutrinos, believing that whatever process creates the Oh My God particle speeds would also be able to create these high-energy neutrinos. There's an observatory underneath the South Pole, actually, that's looking for those. And after years of observation, they have actually detected a bit of a hot spot near the constellation of Ursa Major, but there's nothing there that they can see that would actually be creating this. So, it is still something of a mystery. By the way, in case you're wondering what would happen to an astronaut if they got hit by the Oh My God particle, there was actually a, a link that I put down in the description from physics forums where they discussed this, and it turns out it would actually be about the same as the amount of radiation you would receive from a CT scan. Though it carries the energy of a baseball because of its tiny surface area, it would just pass right into the skin and dissipate into the surrounding tissues. Is anybody else relieved to hear that? I'm very relieved to hear that. One final point is that Paul Summers, an astrophysicist from the University of Pennsylvania, believes that the whole thing might have just been a mistake. He argues that since we haven't seen any particles that match the OMG particles energy in the last 27 years, even though we're using much better equipment now to look for it, that the possibility that it might just have been the crudeness of the fly's eye experiment might be the culprit. For example, the follow-up to the fly's eye observatory was called the Hi-Rez Fly's Eye Observatory, and it measured these cosmic rays in several different ways, and it had multiple redundancies that the first one didn't have. But if it was a fluke or a mistake, it was a really lucky one, because thanks to observations that were inspired by the finding of the Oh My God particle, we have absolutely found more high-energy cosmic rays. They may not be as OMG as the OMG particle, but they have definitely opened up a new window into our universe that we didn't have before. So here's to more OMG moments in the future. Do you have a favorite theory about the Oh My God particle? Was there anything I missed? Are there any articles out there that you read that sounded really cool? Share them in the comments down below. Also, you might notice new shirt. I think this is a really cool one. This is just yet another of the many shirts that we have available at answerswithjoe.com shirts. You can go there, check them out, wear them around, and have people go, ooh, cool shirt. That happened to me earlier today, actually. All right, thanks everybody for watching, and a special thanks to my answer files on Patreon who are helping to keep the lights on and make this whole thing possible. I want to give a shout out to some of my newest members real quick. We've got Mike Shartner, Rick Ray, Michael Burkett, Hugh Thomas, Dave Armstrong, Will Michaelis, Burke Biartmar, uh, here we go, <laughs> Douglas Caton, Tristan Bennett, Red Chronic, Daniel Blankenstein, uh, Christopher Place, Christoph Zumni, Jay Theory, Dan, and Neil Schroeder, and Atandra Anwish, and Mad Rune Hogstead. The last two actually contributed at the highest level. Super big thanks to you guys. If you would like to join the party, get access to free perks, and hear me murder your name live on camera, 
you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. All right, thanks so much for watching. If this is your first time here, I encourage you to check out some of my other videos, possibly subscribe if you like this kind of content. I come back with stuff just like this every Monday. If you got a question you'd like answered, hit me up in the comments down below and you might see your name in a video. Also click the notification bell. I don't ask that very often, but I am starting to post things more midweek. If you click the notification bell, join the notification squad, you'll get notified when I do those. It won't all be a big surprise the next time you check in. All right, thanks again for watching. You guys go out, have an eye-opening week, and I will see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.